Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartz and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today, we have the great pleasure of meeting with Michael Pedone. He is the founder and CEO of salesbuzz.com. Welcome, Michael. Hi, nice to see you again, Gerhard. So I have a very simple question for you. What can salespeople do in sales organizations to double sales in the next six months? Very simple. Start recording your sales reps calls and listen to them. When you're using the phone and you're starting that conversation, you have to make sure your sales reps know exactly what the game plan is, what the strategy is before they ever pick up the phone. And they should know exactly what the steps are and how to execute them. And the best way to find out if they really do that is to simply record their calls and listen to them. If you get a sales manager or a sales director or VP of sales that will break down the sales call into many steps, and then they make sure that their, their reps are following those, those steps on there, sales are going to increase. It's really that simple. You just have to make sure that when they get them on the phone, they know exactly what to say, why to say it, how to say it, what to do with the response, and what to do next. So what are the typical steps in a sales process? First things first is, one, you have to build a list of pre-qualified suspects, right? So every sales rep should know what, what characteristics does a lead have to have to make them be considered a suspect to even reach out to, right? So you have to know that to begin with. That should be basic right. number one. It is not their job to close every lead they call. That's not their job. Their job is to close as many qualified prospects as fast as possible. And you cannot qualify a lead until you talk to them. Just call to see if you can help. Have that mental mentality. Just call to see if you can help them. And then now when it comes time to pick up the phone, you need more than that. You can't just say, well, I'm going to call, see if I can help and just wing it. The first step is their opening value statement. They have to know how to peak interest and gain permission within the first 15 seconds of that call. Getting the conversation started is step one. And so whether you're sending a tweet or you send a LinkedIn message or you send an email or you use the phone, you have to capture their attention to get them willing to want to have a conversation with you. And the best way has been proven to use the phone to do that. Most salespeople mess the call up from here now. Because now that they the, the prospect goes, yeah, I got a second, go ahead. They're like, okay, what do I do next? The second phase is qualifying. There's lots of little steps to qualifying, much more than the first one. But the very first thing you have to do when, you, when they say yes, I have to ask an engagement question. An engagement question is going to place your prospect's attention in an area that you want them thinking about. And then the next question is your, is your opportunity size question. Your opportunity size question is, as a sales rep, you want to quickly find out what is the potential opportunity size here. If I'm selling shipping and I'm, or, or, or if I handle shipping and I'm in the truckloads, right? I might want to find out when I get the person on the phone. Second question is going to be, I'm just out of curiosity, how many shipments are you doing a month? Why? Because you want to ask a couple of questions that are going to uncover if a problem exists. You could say they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing a combination, or they're not doing anything, they're doing this. It doesn't matter how you answer. We're engaged now in a sales conversation. The guard is down, your ears are up, we're communicating. And now the third question is where it gets to the pain point. See, you as a sales rep, when you the reason why you have to build that ICP list, you should know what the top two or three problems that they would have to have in order for them to be interested in your solution. They might not recognize the problem at first. That's why they're a cold lead. But I also know that if I'm going to increase my chances of them wanting to go to that next step or learn more about what we can do and have a chance of earning their business, I got to get them to recognize a problem. So once I get problem recognition, right, I want to make sure that they, I have to identify who this person is as a decision maker. Too many sales are lost because the salesperson assumed that they were a decision maker based on that person's title or their role in the company. But you have to understand there's five roles as it relates to a decision maker for every prospect you ever speak to, they will fit into one of five roles as it relates to their role in the decision-making process. They're either the ultimate decision-maker, they're part of the decision-making team, they're an influencer, they're an end-user, or they're an info-gatherer. The bottom two have no power whatsoever. I got problem recognition, I identified their role, they're the right person to be speaking to, and the time frame's right. If I get that far, I should have a really good idea of what their problem is, and I should know my solution well enough to know that what the bottom number is going to be and what the top number is going to be. Then I could say to somebody, let's, you know, I, right before I do the presentation or I hand it off to somebody to do a demo, I could say, well, listen, uh, before we go any further, it sounds like you're a really good fit for what we have to offer to help you solve X, Y, Z. Typically, our price range is going to be anywhere between $500 and $5,000. My question to you is, if you really love what we have to offer 
and you decide you want to move forward with it, you know, is, is that doable for you? Is that within your price range? Right. And now, now they can only say three things, yes, no, or maybe. So, but then when they do, when the qualifying is done, if they're the right person and is ready to set the demo or the presentation or what have you, whether you handle the sale from A to Z or you have to hand it off, you have to do a presentation. But the presentation, there is definitely a way to do a presentation where you have these, what I call tie downs and check-ins to make sure they're with you. And you have to sharpen your, your listening skills to make sure that they're, they're on point and what to do if they sound off a little bit so that you can get them back on point. And then once that happens, you, you learn some of those presentation skills, then you have to do what a step that nobody, almost nobody knows exists in the sales process. And it's called closing on solution concept. You have to do this before you go for a close. So if I'm doing a presentation, I'm giving my tie downs, I'm getting green lights, or I get a yellow or red and I handle it and it turns green, I keep going. And when I'm getting ready to, I'm ending uh, the, the, the presentation. One of the things I want to ask is, listen, I, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, Gerhard, but let me just ask you this. I mean, what do you like best about what you've heard so far? When you're off that call and the manager comes over and says, hey, that call sounded great. Where are we? The salesperson is going to be able to do we have this, 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 and this, and this is what happens next. The right steps in the sales process. And it's really just getting back to basics, but I'm just shocked at how many salespeople, even if it's like five, 10 years, don't have the back to basics down. How do you get salespeople to trust the process so that they can follow it. First of all, what I tell a lot of people, look, I'll give you the first course for free. Just take the first course. It'll show you how to create an opening value statement. What I hear is I get, hey, we're getting more people wanting to take our calls and, and do, you know, they're like, they're saying yes. We don't know what to do next. When you show somebody that something and you explain the right way and it's solid, rock solid advice and they use it and it's being successful, then they're, they're all in. Well, thank you, Michael, for educating us. Uh, where can people find more? Salesbuzz.com. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>